Good day everybody, RC Grabag here. Welcome back to the channel. So in my last video, I had completed the sub roadbed for the two track main line of my layout. And in this video, I'll be building a two track curved wooden trestle. The trestle will be two feet tall at its tallest point. It will have a diameter of approximately 84 inches or a 42 inch radius. And it will be a 180 degree curve. So the first thing I had to do was create some sort of template to help me align the parts as I constructed the trestle. So here I'm using Adobe Illustrator to draw a circle with the same diameter as what the trestle would have, which is approximately 84 inches. Now, most drawing programs will allow you to do what you see me doing here. That is to draw a line, make a copy of it, rotate it on an angle, and then repeat that process. And I'll use these lines to help me align the bents to form the curve of the trestle. So the trestle has 54 bents spread out evenly across a 180 degree curve which translates to roughly 3.39 degrees between each bent. And we've expressed those measurements on the template here. Now, once the template's drawn, the next thing to do is to print it out. Now, I don't have a printer big enough to print out an 84 inch drawing, so I'm gonna have to print this out in sections. And I'll print these sections with the optional registration marks, and then use those marks to align each of the sections into one larger template. So the template only represents one quarter of the trestle, and the intent here is to build the structure in four sections and then join them together. So here you see a little fixture that I made that utilizes the one quarter length template that I created, and this ensures that as I'm building, everything lines up as intended. So at this point we have everything we need, so let's get started. I've got two bents in the fixture here, and I'm using a combination of clamps and right angle squares to make sure that the bents are perpendicular to the work surface. These red squares are great, by the way. They're about one inch thick, heavy gauge plastic, so they'll stand up on their own and you can clamp to them quite easily. I'll put a link to where you can get these in the description below. So construction basically involves placing the bents in the fixture one at a time and then anchoring them together with the internal stringers, which are running parallel to the work surface and perpendicular to the bents themselves. And then once the bents are anchored together, I'll do the cross bracing on the outside. Now you can see here that when enough of the structure gets built, it's quite strong and it's supporting regular brick sized concrete pavers here that I'm using to kind of keep things from moving around too much. Here we have one quarter of the trestle built and that wasn't so bad, so we're going to start on the second section. Now the second section is going to take a little bit longer because the bents are getting taller, so there's going to be more stringers and there's going to be more cross bracing. So again, you can see how strong the structure is holding up those concrete pavers. Now the wood used in creating the trestle is basswood and it was stained with a dark stain from Minwax. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And then once the wood was stained, I then went over it with a thinned wash of light gray paint to kind of give it more of a weathered look. Overall, I like the effect and we have a couple old railroad bridges in this area that aren't in use anymore and they're made mostly out of timber. And I have to say, they're pretty close to the look I've achieved here. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. So I'm getting close to completing this larger center section here. And if you look off to the left, you can see a smaller size bent on the end there. And that's gonna accommodate a opening in the center of the trestle that's gonna allow something like a creek to run underneath of it. So here I've joined the two sections that I've completed together and I'm using the same fixture I've used to build each section independently to then align the two sections with each other. So I've jumped ahead quite a bit here. These are the remaining two sections being joined together. So once these sections are joined together, they'll be joined with the other two completed sections and the entire structure will be placed on the layout. So here is a trestle in place on the layout and I'm starting to put the top stringers on that will support the track directly. Now, because this is a curved structure, I took some of the tension off of the stringers by pre-curving them before I used them. And the way I did this was I stained them as usual, then I soaked them overnight in water, and then I let them dry for several days on a rack that I made with a piece of plywood and some nails. And this took some of the stress off the structure and made it easier to glue these stringers in place. And I did that for both the internal stringers and the stringers here that are supporting the track. So there are two sets of three stringers each holding up each track, along with some spacers in between the stringers. 
and I'm just holding that assembly together here with these orange clamps. And these clamps are really nice too. They seem to have just the right amount of tension for this kind of work. So if you're interested and you want to know where to get them, I'll put a link in the description below. So here I'm putting in the stringers for the second track. Same steps as the first. And again, the pre-warping of the wood really helps here. So with the stringers in place, it's time to put the track down. I'm using Micro Engineering Bridge Flex Track, which was initially kind of difficult to work with, but it ended up turning out really nice. And I'm using a craft glue called Sobo to hold the track down to the stringers, and this stuff works really great. I'll put a link to it in the description below as well. So at this point, the trestle is mostly done. There's still some detail work to do, but I'll come back and do that at a later time. So we're going to declare this structure ready for inspection. And with that being said, it seems appropriate at this time to send out the track inspection crew to have a look. And here they come in a Broadway limited track inspection vehicle. And they're going to make the first pass across the trestle to evaluate its worthiness for operation. Our track inspection crew has given an enthusiastic thumbs up. So with that, we're gonna send across the first locomotive. And here we have a 2662T logging locomotive in the Rayonier livery. And we're gonna run it light as the inspection crew suggested since this is a first time crossing. Now this particular model is brass and it's from Precision Scale. So that is it for the trestle construction portion of our video. If you like what you see, please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified of future videos. And speaking of future videos, in my next video I'll be covering wiring as well as the foundation for block detection, along with some of the hardware and software selections for DCC control. And now we enter the portion of our video where I show a short bit on some other hobby I'm involved in. And this time it's making chocolate, starting from the raw cocoa bean. So if you're interested, stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.